Hello grade 11 and grade 12 physical sciences learners. I'm Miss Martins. I'm going to be doing a part five equation on electricity, electric circuits. In this circuit, we do have a battery that has internal resistance and we will be answering the following questions in this video. If you like these videos, if you want more exam practice, more chemistry, more physics, please subscribe to my channel. Let's jump right into the video. So we've got a battery with an internal resistance of 0,5 ohms. This is how we draw the battery if it has internal resistance. EMF, unknown. Baby R, internal resistance. It's connected to three resistors, R1, which is connected in series, R2 and R3, which are connected in parallel with each other. And we also have a voltmeter across the battery and an ammeter over here. Now, before we even jump into the questions, I just want you to make sure that you understand what is connected in series, what's connected in parallel. In my opinion, this is quite a straightforward looking circuit, nothing confusing here, but the total current will flow through the battery. So follow that main line of the circuit with your pen, highlighter, or your finger. Total current will flow through R1. Total current will flow through the ammeter, and then we will have a split in the current. Some of the current will go through R2, some of the current will go through R3, and then the total current will continue over here through this part of the circuit and back to the battery. Obviously, this will only happen once the switch is closed. Another thing that is important to point out is that when the switch is open, obviously no current flowing through the circuit, the voltmeter connected across the battery would read the EMF. However, in this question, they're not giving me the reading when the switch is open, they're not giving me the EMF. Once the switch is closed, the voltmeter across the battery will read the terminal or the external potential difference, V external. And as you should know, I do go over this in my explanation videos, which I'll link down below. But as you should know, the EMF is equal to V external plus V internal. So basically, for example, when the switch is open, the battery could read the EMF, say it is 12 volts. When we close the switch, that same voltmeter that initially read 12 volts, this one here, are connected across the battery. Once the switch is closed and current is flowing, that voltmeter will read V external. So let's pretend that V external is 10 volts. That means that V internal, also called lost volts, is 2 volts. And that too is the amount by which the reading on the voltmeter drops. So think about it, when the switch is open, this voltmeter reads 12. When we close the switch, this voltmeter reads 10, which means that the voltmeter reading dropped by 2 volts. That is what we call V internal. And understanding that is actually relevant for this question. But let's jump into our first question. Define the term EMF of a battery. A definition, something that you have to understand. Now, I decided to take this directly from the memo, also just to emphasize important things to you guys. It says, if any of the underlined keywords are omitted, in other words, left out, we must minus one mark per word or phrase. So you need to say it is, and it actually is the maximum energy provided you could say energy provided or work done because you should know that energy and work, same thing. So it's the maximum amount of energy provided by a battery per unit charge or per coulomb charge. This is an alternative way that you can define EMF. And it makes sense because you should be familiar with this formula that looks as follows. It says V is equal to W over Q. So V W is the work done or the energy transferred. Okay, that's work done or energy transferred, first part of the definition. Work done or energy transferred per, per means divide, coulomb or units charge. This at the bottom here is charge, second part of the definition. So the definition matches with the formula that can be used to calculate EMF. EMF is a voltage, it's a potential difference, it's V. And just so I know that you understand, if I tell you that the EMF is 12 volts, what that technically means is that the battery can provide 12 joules of energy, 12 joules of energy per one coulomb of charge. 12 joules of energy per one coulomb of charge. Because think about it like this. It'll be 12 joules, work is at the top, joules is at the top, divided by one coulomb of charge. 12 divided by one, 12 volts. That is why an alternative unit for volts is actually joules per coulomb or j dot c to the power of negative one they like asking stuff like this in multiple choice questions so that's why i like to go over it with you guys 
Our next question or our next little bit of information says the reading on the voltmeter decreases by 1.5 volts when the switch is closed. Give a reason why the voltmeter reading decreases. Now we discussed this a little bit before even attempting the question, but remember when the switch is open, that would be the EMF. When the switch is closed, the reading on the voltmeter drops because it no longer reads the EMF, it now reads the external. So the reason why it drops is because of the lost volt, V internal. So it says here that the reading drops, it says over here, the reading decreases or drops by 1.5 volts. That means that the 1.5 volts is not the EMF, it's not V external, this is actually V internal, which we informally call lost volts. But why does that happen? The reason why it happens is because of the internal resistance of the battery. So basically some of the energy that the battery supplies is converted to heat inside the battery already because of the internal resistance of the battery. So basically the, it's using some of its energy to overcome the internal resistance inside the battery, which is causing lost volts. 8.3, we're getting into some calculations. So calculate the following when the switch is closed. The reading on the ammeter, it is three marks. So when you see three marks, it's most likely going to be a formula, substitution and an answer. Now we need to think about what we have. So we're looking for the reading on the ammeter, which means that we are looking for total current because remember the ammeter measures current and this one over here, the ammeter as it is connected in this circuit over here will measure total current. So we're looking for I total. Now usually if we're looking for total current, one way that we can find it is by using the EMA formula. This comes directly off your formula sheet as is, but I want to show you why this is the incorrect formula to use in this question. We are looking for current, total current. So that's a question mark. We can work out the total external resistance, so big R, because we know this resistance is four ohms, that's 25 and that's 15. So I could work it out. So I could get big R. They gave me baby R, but I don't know EMF. So I can't do this. I also can't use V equals I times big R. So again, I can work out big R, external resistance, but I don't know V external or external voltage. Remember, V external would be the reading on the voltmeter when the switch is closed. They don't give that to us. But what they do give us is how much that reading on the voltmeter decreases by. They tell me that the reading on the voltmeter decreases by 4.5 volts. And as we discussed earlier, the amount of voltage that the voltmeter reading across the battery will decrease by is called V internal because it's lost volts. So I can use this formula because I know V internal. They gave it to me in the question. They told me that the voltmeter reading decreases by 1.5 volts. So I know V internal is 1.5. I'm looking for total current and I know that the small resistance, baby R, internal resistance is 0.5. So I know two out of my three unknowns, therefore I can make use of the formula. So we can rearrange the formula at this point. So we're looking for I is equal to V over R. So it is 1.5 divided by 0 0.5 and I get three amperes. Remember formula, you, um, substitution, answer with units. So here's a little summary of when you will use which formula. Just take note that B equals I times R these are basically the same formulae. V equals I times R, V equals I times R. It's just that we're using different voltages and different resistances depending on what we have. So this is the EMF formula. You will use this if you have the EMF, which is the reading on the voltmeter across the battery when the switch is open. When we use the EMF, we have to use both external resistance and internal resistance. Remember, internal resistance is the resistance of the battery. We will use this formula when the reading on the voltmeter across the battery is given when the switch is closed. And then when using that voltage, we need to use external resistance. If you want to use just internal resistance, you have to use V internal, which is how much the reading on the voltmeter across the battery drops or decreases by its lost volts. Now we're calculating the total external resistance of the circuit. This is easy. You should be able to do this we need to consider all the resistors that are not the internal resistance of the battery. So not this one. So we need to include this resistance over here. These are in parallel. So we'll calculate that separately and then add the one in series. Let's do the parallel calculation first. 
Because R2 and R3 are connected in parallel, we use the 1 over RP formula. Note how I'm calling it R1 and R2. It doesn't matter. I know they're called R2 and R3 here. I just take this formula off of the formula sheet. So 1 over R1. R1 would be all the resistors in this top branch, which is 25. R2 is all the resistors in this bottom branch, which is 15. So 1 over 25 plus 1 over 15. Use your calculator. So my calculator tells me that if I add these two fractions together, I get 8 over 75. But remember, that is 1 over RP. So I want RP. So I must flip that fraction. Then I need to flip the second fraction as well, basically the reciprocal. You get 75 over 8. That is the resistance of the overall or the effective resistance of these in parallel. So this effective resistance is basically 75 over 8. But this is connected in series with this. So we have to add the 4 and please add it in a separate step. The thing that I see a lot of students do wrong when I mark metric exams is they try and add it up here already. You can't do that. It's a separate, completely separate calculation. We will deduct all your marks if you do that. So you need to add it separately like this and you get your final answer, which you may round off to two decimal places if you want. But I just left it like that with your unit. And this is where we give the marks. The next question wants the EMF of the battery. Now we've already discussed the EMF formula. Straight from the formula sheet, you need to write it as it appears on the formula sheet, please, to get your marks. You can't rearrange it yet. You can't distribute I into the bracket yet. It's very important to write your formulas as they appear on the formula sheet. Now I is something that we calculated earlier. Remember I, our total current was three amperes. So we know our total current. We're looking for EMF, so we know that, we're looking for that. We just calculated our external, external resistance of the circuit. 13,375 is what I got, 375 ohms, so I got that. And we know internal resistance, it was given to us in the question, it's 0, 0,5 ohms. So we know baby R, internal resistance, 0, 0,5 ohms. This is just a matter of formula, which I did, substitution which is where you put your variables into the formula like this. You need to show your substitution, please, and then calculating your answer. Remember, you need your answer with units. They accept a range over here because you can use a rounded off answer here for big R, or you can use a non-rounded off like I did. So your answer might differ slightly, but here's the range that they accept. 8.4 and 8.5 are very important understanding questions. So let's go through those quickly. 8.4 says a learner makes the following statement. The current through R3, which is over here, is larger than the current through R2. Is the statement correct? And then we have to say yes or no and explain the answer. Please, grade 11s and grade 12s, when you're answering a question like this, they say, is the statement correct? You have to say yes or no. Some students just forget to answer the question. They jump right into the explanation. Then they lose a mark. Okay, it's a silly way to lose a mark, but I've seen it. I've seen it very often. So, will R3 have a bigger current than R2? The answer is yes. Why would the answer be yes? Well, if you take a look at the resistances, R3 has a smaller resistance. And the smaller the resistance means bigger currents because resistance and current are inversely proportional if voltage is constant. So it's very, very important to state that because R2 and R3 are connected in parallel, they have the same voltage. So voltage is constant or voltage is the same. Therefore, if your resistance is smaller, your current is bigger. Or if your resistance is bigger, your current is smaller. Now, I always tell my students they must mention the relationship. So it's inversely proportional or larger current, smaller resistance. Same thing. So mention the relationship. Tell me what is constant because the third variable always has to be constant. So that says for the same potential difference, so that's mentioning the constant, and then you have to show me the relationship or the formula that you use. So two marks, but I want to technically see three things. 8.5 says if I remove the 4 ohm resistor from the circuit, so I take it out, it no longer exists. What will happen to the EMF of the battery? Increase, decrease, or remains the same? The EMF of the battery will always stay constant. The EMF of the battery won't change unless we replace the battery, or obviously over time, the battery will go flat. But removing a resistor here does not affect the EMF of the battery. It will affect the reading on the voltmeter when the switch is closed because it will affect V external, but it never will affect the EMF of the battery. 
I hope that this has been helpful. Check out the links below for more videos like this, more explanation videos, past paper videos. Subscribe for more. I can't wait to see you in another one very soon. Bye, everyone.